Hi, this is episode 73 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. When it comes to building now web applications, a solid understanding of CSS will really take you a long way. You can use this post as a guide to CSS selectors, which are the key components for connecting styles with page elements. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Your CSS files are where you can place the rules that will dictate the look and feel of your application. So if you imagine the components of a website being like cogs in a machine, your HTML and CSS elements would be separate entities. Essentially, your CSS files contain the style rules for the entire website, but in order for the rules to go into effect, you need to connect the two components, and that's where CSS selectors go. CSS selectors allow you to specify elements on the page, and then apply the style rules to the elements that you list off. For example, you may want to select a navbar or a table so you can give the components their own set of styles. Taking a look at this page, you can see a sampling of the page elements that you can select, including the page title, logo, navigation bar, image, sharing links, breadcrumbs, etc. So how exactly can you select elements on this page? Much like the HTML markup language, there's a specific syntax to use for CSS styles, and that's what we're going to walk through today. Starting with the basics, there are two main ways to select items on a page. You can select elements, such as divs, h1 tags, which are heading tags, that kind of thing. For these, the element name itself will select the item on the page. So if you select an H1 tag and you apply a set of styles to it, it'll affect all the H1 tags on that page. Next, you can have the system find unique IDs. For selecting ID, you use the hash symbol right before the name of the ID. Classes are attributes that you can use multiple times. In order to select a class, you use the dot selector syntax, so you put a dot right in front of the name of the class. In this image, you can see each one of the selector options. The div element is selected and given the background color of red. The div with the class name of my cool class has been given the background color of green. And lastly, the ID named my cool ID has been given the background color of blue. Notice how even though all three elements are divs, they can all be selected separately. This is accomplished through the concept of CSS selector prioritization. At a high level, it means that the most specific selector wins, which is why the background color red wasn't rendered for the elements that have the class and ID selectors since they're considered more specific. In addition to selecting basic elements, there are many times when you need to select nested elements on a page. In this example, you can see that we have a set of bullet point elements nested inside of our class. By using this syntax, we're able to select the nested items inside of another element and define our own styles. So what happens when you want to select an item that doesn't have a class and, or ID or anything like that, and it simply belongs to a group of elements, much like bullet points? For example, what happens if you need to give specific styles to only a single bullet point? That's where the nth child selector comes into play. Here you can see a selector that leverages the nth child mechanism, which allows us to specify which element we want to style. In this case, I passed in one to pick out the first bullet point. Nth child selectors are part of a special group of selectors called pseudoclasses. The list of pseudoclasses is relatively extensive, and I placed a link to the full list along with the link to the CSS selector documentation that you can use to further your knowledge in the show notes. I hope that this has been a helpful guide to CSS selectors and that it can help you build custom styles into your next web application.